I had always encouraged Brad and JJ that to work together. You know, they had never worked together before, and I had such an intense working relationship with Brad and one with JJ. So I had these two different families who kind of had never crossed paths, uh, and I always thought that they would be great together doing something. And uh, I remember JJ saying, "Well, do you think he might be interested in this?" And I was like, "Well, you have to call him and ask him. I think it would be a great opportunity for him to get his feet wet in in, in live action with him." So. So they did, and in this process of trying to figure out if it could work, if it, if it was right for him, not right for him, this went on for a little while, but eventually he signed on, and from then on it was just, uh, uh, you know, obviously we were going to work together on it, and I was just really excited to see what Brad Bird would do with a Mission Impossible movie. It's very easy to let the audience know that this is a Mission Impossible movie when you're working with one of the greatest themes ever written, uh, which is, of course, the Mission Impossible main theme by Lalo Schifrin. And Lalo wrote such an indelible theme that you just, you know, the second you hear it, it just gets you pumped. So it's fun to be able to kind of twist it, turn it, use it in many different ways. And the new Mission Impossible is much more of a roller coaster thrill ride. You know, I, I liken it, it's more Indiana Jones uh, than uh, anything else. And it's, and it's a lot of fun. The stakes are there, but there's still an amazing sense of humor that Brad was able to instill in the movie, which carries it along. This film is different in that it takes you all over the world, you know, in a way that we wanted to announce you're going all over the world. So if you're in Russia, we wanted it to sound like you're in Russia. When you get to India, you're in India. And of course, when you're in Dubai, we want you to feel like, yep, you're in Dubai. And uh, that was fun. So the orchestration changed quite a lot from locale to locale. Tom is amazing to work with because he's like, he listens. He listens to you. He wants to hear what you have to say. He gives his ideas of what he thinks, and he's very centered on what's going to help the story the best. And I really do love working with him because of that. And he's one of those guys you put up in front of the orchestra, and you're like, all right, you're going to conduct the Mission Impossible theme. He goes, okay, show me how to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, he's always willing to do it, as you can tell, because he hung from that building, you know, thousands of feet in the air. I, I don't know a lot of people that would do that. I certainly wouldn't. but. It, the thing that I learned from him, he's just always doing his best work no matter what. He wants to do the best he can. He's a very cinematic director. He's not just like in there tight close-ups all the time. He's a very cinematic director who wants to engross the audience with, you know, he'll give you the wide shot and just hang on the wide shot for a while. He wants you to kind of feel uh, a part of the what's going on in the film. So he's not just going to cut you in, cut you out. He gives you a chance to actually revel in what you're looking at, which is fun. So yeah, which then in turn gives me a chance to have some fun with the music and do these really kind of big sweeping themes like we had in Dubai uh, or even in Russia. There was a kind of, a, we used a big Russian men's choir to kind of announce we're in Russia. So he's very old school in that sense. And I, I, I always, what I said to him and he got mad at me for saying this, I was like, this is going to be like if David Lean directed a Mission Impossible movie. It's going to be awesome. And he was like, oh, why did you say that? Because he loves David Lean. He's like, why did you say that? I don't need that pressure. 